We see light with our eyes and we hear sounds with our ears. But have you seen any good sounds lately? Can we see sounds? Yes, sometimes. Watch this. Now concentrate on the flame of the match. Ice cream, fruit salad, and cherry pie. Right? <laughs> you can see the flame moving. Actually, when we speak, little puffs of air come out of our mouths. Hold your fingers in front of your mouth as you speak and you'll feel those puffs of air, particularly with any word containing the letter P or B. We can make a little machine to show us those sounds a little more clearly. Here's what you do. Start with a plastic cup or plastic container and cut a hole in one side. And then cut a balloon in halves, like so. And then stretch the top half of the balloon over the top of that container. You're actually making a kind of drum. It's actually a back to front drum. There we are, it can be any size you like, a little one like that, or a big one like this one made out of a cream container. With a drum, when you beat the skin, air vibrates, and in this case, air would come out of the side. What we'll do with this one is to put vibrating air in from something that's making a sound, such as my voice, and we'll see if we can see any changes in the skin. Watch this. Remember that letter P. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Do you see any changes at all? Possibly not. Tell you what, I'll do the same thing again, but this time I'll add some small light things to the top of the drum. Grains of rice, although you might want to use anything else you like. Now, I'll say the same thing. I'll try to say it about the same way as I said it before. Here we go, you ready? Watch the skin of the drum and watch the rice grains. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now you can see something happening. What if I make a continuous note? Watch this. Do, and you're seeing sounds. Another thing I could do is to supply sound from something else, such as a cassette recorder or a radio. So I'll set up my little back to front drum there, place some rice grains on the top once again. There we are and then we'll switch on the recorder and see if we can see any sounds. Here we go. Now watch the rice grains as I turn the volume up. You can certainly see the sound then. It doesn't have to be rice grains, let's try some salt grains much smaller, lighter pieces, we can put more of them on there. See if any interesting patterns develop. Here we go. So we've made a little machine that helps us to see sounds. If you've ever been to a recording studio, you may have seen another machine that's designed to show you what sounds look like. It's called a VU meter, and it has a little lever that moves backwards and forwards. Well, it's possible for us to attach a lever to our little back to front drum. You can see that I've already placed a little mirror tile on the skin of the drum and I'm going to switch on this desk lamp so that it shines a beam of light down onto the mirror and then up onto the wall. Now, although you can't see it, that beam of light is acting as a lever. So if there's any movement in the skin of the drum, watch what happens to the beam of light on the wall. See, it's moving up and down. So, all we need to do now to test it out is to switch on our source of sound, the cassette recorder, and see if we can see any interesting patterns on the wall. Here we go. watching sound as well as listening to it. Well that's just one way of watching sound and it's pretty crude. There are more sophisticated machines that can be used to look at sound like this cathode ray oscilloscope or crow. Now you can see on the screen that as I speak a green line bounces up and down in time with the sounds that you're hearing. That trace is made not by a beam of light inside but by a beam of electrons which are making that green trace appear. And with a crow such as this you can look at all sorts of sounds, not only human voices, but 
the sound of dogs, the sound of birds, and musical sounds as well. Uh, uh, uh. 